Hello everybody, welcome back to Modded Minecraft. This is Seftek Ages. I am Mars Capone. And I'm playing with Crasconio. And... We're, we're gonna fight the weather. <laughs> In the last episode, um, we went down to the Dreadlands or something Abyssalcraft related. And there was a boss and we felt severely underpowered. So we looked up ways to make ourselves uh, a little more overpowered. And there were these personal beacons. And for that we needed wither stars. So um, we decided to kill a wither. And uh, th that's what we're doing right now. But uh, unfortunately, after that we found out that <laughs> the personal beacons are... We, we thought you would put them in your inventory. But apparently they're uh, they're like regular beacons, but they just count for you. So that's not really super useful and a little expensive. So we decided up we, we decided not to use them. But um, it's good to have another stars anyway. <laughs> so uh, and it was a good test of our skill to see how uh, how powerful we were. And as you can see, we don't have any trouble with fighting this wither, except for aim and um, <laughs> other stuff. Hover mode really works well. <laughs> so yeah, we did it. Not too shabby. And then we decide to fight another one. And that one too, not too, too much trouble. Here we go, almost there. Keblamo. And I got another star. Beautiful. So then it's time to take on the Shagoroth, the Dread Beast. We're ready. We have a strength potion. We have a notch apple. We have uh, the anti dreadium plague potions. <laughs> so look at that. I have 28 hearts at this moment. Because I got the 10 red ones, the 10 orange ones, and then the 5 yellow ones. Uh, but yeah, we're getting wrecked hard, as you can see. Even just these uh, regular enemies that are in front of them are wrecking our face. Another golden apple. And I think, well, let's just do it. Let's go in. Dragon Plague potion. Let's start fighting. And we died. <laughs> so this is my third try or something to get my grave back. This is not the grave you see, it's not the grave with all my good stuff in, it's just uh, a grave with a pickaxe and a sword in. But just to show you how tough it is, we were really in quite a pickle, because we couldn't get to our grave with all our good stuff in, our jetpacks, our good tools. Yeah, and the, the plague is awful. <laughs> really, really awful. Here I finally managed to get uh, the previous grave back, I don't know. <laughs> Well, then I decide to make a uh, way down before the guy, before Shagaroth. And that leads into this this purple room here. And that's behind him, so this is kind of the loot you get after you kill him. But it's nothing too special. But uh, this we thought this might be a good way to get to him. And there he is. Look at him. He looks awful, he looks ugly, and he can hurt us, <laughs> even when we're feeling quite safe. Look at these enemies, they're quite creepy. And there you can see my grave, did you see it, did you see it? <laughs> and yeah, look at how much damage they do. And here I'm thinking, I'm gonna die of the plague, I'm not healing fast enough with these apples. But I actually survived. <laughs> So what do you do then? Right, I'm gonna go from my grave. It's right there. Yes. And I got it. And I die. <laughs> so this went on for uh, quite a few minutes. Uh, or an hour maybe, I don't know. <laughs> we lost all track of time. But uh, we managed to inch our graves to the wall. And then we managed to get all our stuff back finally. And then we found out he couldn't really reach us from here, and we could reach him. And, um, yeah, we decided to kind of cheese him. But it was really the only way for us. And 
Personally, I don't mind it. I feel like um, with a Vex map, for example, anything is possible. Anything that you can think think of in the game, you can do. And um, I feel that's kind of fair. So here we we're we have one shot left. Here, one more then. One. This is the final one. And there he goes. He, go he even talks in chat. <laughs> um, so yeah, he's talking about this chest. But we already filled this chest with our own stuff. <laughs> and in the middle you can see the legendary block of dirt. Whatever that may mean. But if you thought it was over... No. <laughs> that room is filled with mobs and they keep on coming. It's unbelievable. There's so many of them. And they keep giving us the plague, and it's... They're really, really tough. But we did end up getting the key, and that's what we killed him for. So we, we could go to the next dimension. So then we're three portals deep, I believe. <laughs> and, yeah, look at this. Another golden apple I need. It's uh, a tough, tough world, this. <laughs> The wreck in our face. We we may need to look into some other armor, maybe some other bows and stuff from Tinkers. I don't really. It's not my favorite thing about modded Minecraft to look up what's all the best armor and stuff and the best uh, the best weapons and stuff. So if you have any suggestions, feel free to let us know because we do need some better armor. I guess. Um. And yeah, this I. <laughs> That's a nice shot by me. He did survive. And yeah, here's the beautiful rainbow with all the beams of my. all the deaths. So if you want to know how many times I died, you can count these beams. <laughs> but we did manage to pull it off in the end. And this is a pretty cool terrain. I really like this world. Even though it's really hard. <laughs> It's pretty nice. And now with the key in our inventory, we can make the next portal. So uh, I think Carasconio built this whole structure here. Oh yeah, this is the key. You can see it being melted. He set up the altar there to uh, to do some rituals. And to charge his Necronomicon and stuff. So yeah, there's the other portal that brought us here. So next to, to that we're gonna make our new portal. Right there. Crasconio is the expert on making portals. So he's gonna plop it down right there. Yep, right there. Beautiful. True expert. <laughs> there we go. It's in the same, it's in the right place. Definitely the right spots. First try. Right? Yeah. <laughs> he didn't see that. So that brings us to this place. Good thing we have jetpacks, because it may have killed us otherwise. So I decided to uh, build a bridge to the land. I don't know what hit us there. It was quite painful. But, um, yeah. Nice bridge to the land. But then I realized I had to go the other way. <laughs> so going the other way and then I ran out of the blocks and then I went back to the portal for more blo I don't know what I'm doing here what am I doing uh, oh I'm being a smart boy and making a waypoint at the portal always make a new waypoint at the portal when you enter a new dimension uh, and then I realized I have a jetpack so I don't really need this walkway here Although it's nice for when you die and stuff, and you don't have your jetpack anymore. But this is also a pretty cool dimension, with a big village. It's village all over the place. Um, the same shadow enemies from the overworld, those special biomes. And these are kind of villagers, they're non-hostile mobs. And these guys are, they are hostile. And they're pretty powerful. They have a lot of health. And they hit quite hard. Quite hard. But I have mastered my fiery rapier. 
So um, I even need an, a golden apple here because I got kind of scared. They hit kind of hard. And they have quite a reach, so it's kind of hard to keep them at bay. And there's a lot of them. And then I nearly fall to my dad. But yeah, we have jetpacks, <laughs> luckily. And then Cresconio discovers this humongous structure. And there is a boss in it. Jazahar, Gatekeeper of the Abyss. So, um, I think he also dropped something. Or, there is a reason we came to this dimension to make progress in our uh, industrial uh, revolution. New machines, new tiers of miners and stuff. So, yeah, this structure is really, really cool. Looks pretty amazing. So we decide to go in. This is the minion of the gatekeeper. And look at how much health he has. And this is just a minion. Luckily he has a one track mind. He only focuses on one person. And I accidentally hit <laughs> the villager here. And, and yeah, these guys take a lot of hits. They're quite, quite powerful. They're very powerful. <laughs> it's kind of scary. But as at least these guys are easy to keep at bay, luckily. And uh, yeah, the jetpack also helps. And these guys drop the stuff we came here for. These special ingots and whatever else they drop. Um, that stuff, I don't know, quite know what it's called. So we decide to go check out the structure. And these guys are on fire. They can get set on fire. I thought they didn't take any fire damage because you don't see their health going down. But that's just because they have so much health. You can barely see it when they take damage from fire. Oh, and that was the boss that you see on the left there. Yeah, this is quite a cool place with all the pillars. There's all these statues and a giant library. And more minions. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it really helps having the jetpack, so you can fly over them and then the other person can uh, take them on. Because if two of these guys, or a few of these guys, manage to get you alone, uh, it's pretty rough. And there's this, uh, some kind of altar here, we may need, need to use it in the future, we'll see. So this is what happens when you talk to the the villagers, they say something to you. <laughs> I think Kreskonya can actually trade with them. Here's uh because he has a better Necronomicon. Here's Kreskonya's technique of uh, fighting these guys at <laughs> a few at a time. <laughs> with a bucket of lava. And as you can see their health goes down from fire tick, but it's such a small amount, <laughs> it takes forever. So we need to help him along a bit we managed to do <laughs> and there we go and then Karskonia decides maybe we can use the same technique on the boss and Karskonia is real good at dodging his projectiles luckily I don't know if any hit him because they might do a lot of damage but we also are carrying a charm that keep that uh, makes it so we don't wither and don't poison, I don't know how good... Uh, is that true? I don't know. <laughs> but it's a pretty good charm. And uh, that's why we the weather fight was so easy. Um, but then we decide maybe we can do some teamwork. Cresconio distracts him while I shoot him. And that works pretty good. His projectiles are relatively easy, easy to dodge. So if one person just gets his attention and dodges the projectiles, the other person can just uh, shoot him and actually hit him in the face. Like that, yes. <laughs> Very good. So, this takes a while. He has a nice throne room. And, uh, yeah, 
It's gonna be the end of you, Jazzard. <laughs> so yeah, this Abyssal Craft is a pretty cool mod. It's uh, very big. It has a lot of dimensions, and the dimensions are pretty cool. They're filled with stuff. It's not like um, Galactic Craft with all the empty planets <laughs> and uh, kind of gimmicky bosses. Well, I guess most bosses in Minecraft are gimmicky, because I don't know. It's kind of a limited uh, engine, <laughs> but um, yeah, we don't have t too much trouble taking this guy down. Luckily, because we had enough trouble with the previous guy, with all our dead runs, um, the final blow. And then he talks a lot in chat about uh, how we kill him or not, and. This kind of scared me for a moment, because I thought maybe he was going to block off the room and uh, we had to actually fight him up close and with a bunch of minions and he would kill us all. See, I'm kind of scared, I'm backing up. <laughs> but no, it's uh, it's not, not too bad. This is somehow some kind of ending. <laughs> maybe we'll see him later in a more powerful form. Well, this guy's pretty powerful. As you can see here, he blew off half the building. <laughs> so that's pretty scary. But that's uh, our adventures in Abyssalcraft, in the other, all the other dimensions of Abyssalcraft. Pretty cool. But let's go to some live commentary here at the ME base. And we've done quite a lot of work here. And we added some more molecular assemblers. And there's going to be a second row here. And I'm I'm guessing they're going to be eight high. So that's going to be nice. And I also added another uh, co-processing unit. <laughs> with a crafting monitor. We um, made the ME controller bigger. And so this was our first crafting processing unit, but it can only handle one at a time. I don't know if this can handle more at a time or it's just faster. I think it can handle more at a time with all these co-processing units. And uh, we started automating immersive engineering for all the rods and blocks and nuggets and plates and then we started automating a mechanism over here and of of course <laughs> it all looks kind of messy still but uh we're working on it <laughs> it's kind of hard to make progress and also build buildings so uh yeah, we chose to prioritize making progress. <laughs> so bear with us. Um, oh yeah, over here we have um, a squid. And uh, I want you guys in the comments to uh, suggest names for him. Because uh, he's going to be with us for a while. Because he provides us with insects. Because of this rancher here. So that's really nice. So suggest a name for him. Because he has to be named. Otherwise he's going to despawn. You can leave it in the comments. And then... Do we do s more stuff over here? Yeah, I expanded the wall with mob drops. So we have all the colored wools. Which is going to be handy for... Um, Galactic crafts. And then... Um, we added spiders, gas tears, wither skeleton stuff. Wither skeletons need five boxes. <laughs> and these two are different mob drops. It's kind of ridiculous. They're just mirrored. I don't know. <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. Um, creeper hearts or creeper oysters. They don't really have any use, but oh well. May as well. And... This is except for these two, this is all the stuff we get from our miners. 
Crasconio has been very busy upgrading uh, our turbine, which is now able to output 25k RF, KRF. And most of that power goes to here. <laughs> so we made, oops, we made <laughs> Crasconio mostly, made a tier 4 void or mine. <laughs> minor controller. Yeah, that's quite a mouthful. Um, and you can add these modifiers here, and they take up more energy, but they make it so that you get better stuff. So, um, better stuff and quicker stuff. <laughs> so yeah, they start to look pretty impressive. And we also realized that 6 might be a little bit of overkill, especially if we upgrade them all to tier 6. But there's also different kinds of miners. This one, for example, is black instead of blue. And that gives that gives us all these products. Uh, but Crescogno sets all of this up, so I'm not 100% sure if I'm saying this all correctly. This has given us all the different co colored terracotta and all kinds of stones and re earth related things. So we don't really need those guys anymore. Although they provide sand quite a lot quicker than the that guy. Uh, that guy. This is 10 stacks. This is 310 or 13 to be precise stacks. So yeah. But once we upgrade that, that thing too, it's gonna be quite impressive. Um, is that everything? I was gonna show you the sheep and say something like, look at all these different colored sheep. But yeah, this uh, rancher uh, shears them as soon as they grow any wool, so it's not really that impressive looking. <laughs> but yeah, all these sheep have different colors of wool. Um, these are for consumption. Um, oh, there's wither skeletons being slain right here. This machine works a lot better if I'm online by myself. So if Cresconio is online and he's somewhere else, then there's not many mobs spawning. Can you see? Are they being killed quick enough that they don't show on the minimap? Because why else would the wither skeletons be spawning? I don't know. I only see wither skeletons spawn. No mobs in the mob farm. Oh well, as long as they spawn, that's all we need. <laughs> oh yeah, there's one in the mob farm right now. But yeah, the sheep farm too still needs a lot of uh, work. Visually. And this too. And this too. <laughs> but I think I'm just gonna build something around this. But yeah, we've done quite a lot this episode. We've played quite a lot and we've made a lot of progress. I don't know if it shows. But um, we're really happy. It's going fast. I, okay, let's sleep. <laughs> I'll talk a little more about it. Um, I really like the progress in this mod pack. Because it... Let's go get away from... What are you doing here? Leave us alone. Um, what was I saying? I really like the progress because... Of course, it starts off really slow, and at this point, where you're like, oh my god, finally we're getting jetpacks, finally we're getting an ME system, but then it really starts to pick up, especially with all those void miners. Like, if you want to make a 64k storage uh, unit, <laughs> and if you don't know, that's a real expensive item from ME, I just automated that and made one. Like, all of this stuff. I just have to click once and I get one. So yeah. It really speeds up at this point. So it's just a matter of what do we want to automate? How do we want want them automated? Where do we want it? Do we, do we want to build a, a building around it? And that's about it. So 
really happy with how this is going. And um, who knows what will get done next episode. You'll have to wait and see. But for now, thanks for watching and see you then. Bye-bye.